Conclusion. As useful as the shamanic tree of life model or the cosmic world tree model has been for appreciating the Bible's perspective on the cosmos, the Israelite tradition also expected a new earth and a new sky vault. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 to 20. See, I am creating sky vaults new and an earth new. The former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. Instead, shout for joy and be glad forever in what I am creating. Indeed, I am creating Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exult in my people. No longer shall the sound of weeping be heard there, or the sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, nor anyone who does not live a full lifetime. One who dies at a hundred years shall be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred shall be thought accursed. Isaiah 66, verse 22. Just as the sky vaults knew and the earth knew, which I am making, shall endure before me, oracle of Yahweh, so shall your descendants and your name endure. The former things have passed away. Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a sky vault new and an earth new. The former sky vault and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Verse 4, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain. The old order has passed away. In contrast to contemporary belief in evolution, the ancients believed in devolution. Pessimistic as this may sound, the biblical tradition contained a divine promise of a renovated world and a transformed cosmos. Less a completely new sky vault and completely new earth, more a renewed earth and renewed sky vault. Things put to the place that they should be. There will be no sea, meaning no chaos, in this new world or cosmos. It will have a new Jerusalem, but no temple, because God will be their temple. There will be no sun or moon, since God and the Lamb will illumine the city. Where does this information come from? The Israelite astral prophet John of Patmos explicitly states that he learned this information in alternate states of consciousness. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was caught up in spirit. That could be translated, I fell into trance on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet. John of Patmos took sky journeys in trance to the throne, that is, the sky vault. Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. At once I was caught up in spirit. I at once I fell into trance. A throne was there in Sky Vault, alternate reality. And on the throne sat, and it goes on. And in trance, John of Patmos also traveled elsewhere. Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. Then he carried me away in spirit to a deserted place where I saw a woman seated on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names, with seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 21.10, He took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of sky vault from God. Perhaps John of Patmos also gained some insight from visits to the middle world of the tree of life, the real earth.
Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.